now by saying, no more limitation. It can no more happen. And yesterday we said something that when that the kind of situation came to Esau, and uh, he was trying to uh, beg uh, Isaac, please, not even one blessing. Isaac said, it is so. But the only thing that can change it is when you revolt against the situation. Our problem is that certain times we don't revolt against the situation. Certain times we begin to cry. Certain times we complain. Certain times we call this other person, that other person. Certain times we go into self-pity. Sulking. And the situation will be there. And that's as we said yesterday, it was that kind of situation, that kind of attitude that Hannah had. She will cry and cry and cry. Before she finishes by clearing her eyes, the Irina will talk another one. Let her continue to cry. But one day she took a decision and said, no, cannot continue. I have a solution. My dear, you have a solution. Because you may not know how. You may not know her. You don't even need to know her. What you're looking for, what is God saying concerning this situation? What, what he says concerning this situation is what starts? Because forever, O oh Lord, his word is settled in heaven. It is settled in heaven. Because it's what he says and then and in Christ Jesus. Unless you are not in Christ Jesus. So no matter the challenging situation, Moses announced and said, I want to announce you the Egyptians you saw before. You will not see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It happened as he said. Even though the Egyptians were running, picking, picking, picking after them as they were leaving Egypt. What did we really do? Did we need them to go? And they started running their horses. And all that. You never heard about horses for these dwellers. So by the time they got to that uh, Red Sea and the Red Sea divided, they passed over because God has started the journey. We had to take care of every situation. I want to tell you that God has started the journey with you Amen. unless you don't submit to Him. You don't need to think. Many a times, some people will tell me, <laughs> even my, my son used to say, Don't mind, mommy. No matter what, you said it is well. Don't worry, let's begin to go. When we get to Jordan, Jordan will divide. Mm. Let's not think about what, how Jordan is going to, uh, going to divide. Right. As long as you are moving with God, when you get there, there must be a way. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And so they went that there was a way eventually. Mm. And they passed. And the same Egyptians that did most, they said, don't worry. The Egyptians who saw before will not see again. They were running with their chariots and all that. And God, the same miracle way that God pro uh, provided this, they were not even afraid. They didn't even see, see as, as way to think. What is going on? How can it be so? And they were jumping in. But it's, the point is that we were jumping at the middle of the sea. God was stopping them. Stopping them. And I believe that the other side, Israelites and our pastor said, hey, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, no, they are coming, they are coming. Hallelujah. So look as if God gets quiet. It may be that in your own situation, look as if God gets quiet. We say, God gets quiet. And we'll be talking no sign. Hallelujah. And so they were moving on. They started shouting. They are crossing on. They are crossing the same miracle road. They are crossing in the sea. Before their very eyes, the horse and its rider he threw into the sea. Why? Because the water overflowed and killed all of them again. So that what God said, what Moses told them, came to be that the Egyptians they saw they will not see again. Before their very eyes, they could not see their enemies. Before your very eyes, you will look for your enemies. You will not find them again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you yeah. will not find them again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because God took care of that. The same God will take care of that for you. Yeah. And their song changed. It's like unto you. I want God to cause 
God will give you a new song. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. For every child and every mercy, whatever, they will cross over. They will divide on your behalf. Yeah. And you will cross over. It is going to be a miracle. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So it's a miracle. That's uh, one of the bishops in Anambra State. Speaking to us in SFI convention, told us about a person in one state in Nigeria, a one state, and then there was a, a group of uh, young people that were supposed to go overseas for for one kind of training or course or whatever, you know. They were selected, and this particular young person came a day before and couldn't see his name again in the list. Uh, but before that, he saw his name and he knew the number. But when he came, he now began to cry. But my name was there, my name was there, my name was there. And the man, the, the, the man in the office said, and, and who has cleaned my name? Um, I mean, she, the boy was saying, because his name was cleaned off with this uh, liquid um, correction food. And another name written there. So that was how my name was, what was the, 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 the man in the office said, even if God comes into this office himself, he cannot write your name in this list. It's already settled. So, with that statement, the boy left now. Manandiri ne marachina, nani ne gemi ke. The boy cried back, and the auntie took her, took him to this bishop. He was not a bishop then; he was a fellow. And then. So I told the bishop, I mean that's uh, what we call the what he is now, the bishop, told him the story. But the bishop became angry. I said, who is that person that will defy the name of my God like that? I tell you, go and pack your bag. By six o'clock, come back to my house. You are traveling with that person thing. And I believe that as they are packing, they will say, hey, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And before six o'clock, they were at the gate. The gate man didn't open the door because it was at six. Immediately it was six, they came in. But they didn't know that around 10 p.m., that same night, that Bishop said, Go and pack. A lady, George or so, in that state, called him and said, They told me I have a slot for this program. Do you have anybody that you can put there? Yeah. That same night. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you do it for me. Don't bother to look for rain, don't bother to look for wind, but the valley shall be filled with water. And so, by that, the bishop gave her his name. So, by the time they came at 6 o'clock in the morning, tell me, so how can it be? How can it be that this thing is happening? How can it be? He said, go back to that same office. So they went the same, the same morning. Before the office, the people came. They were already there. And before you know it, as they entered, because the info instruction had already been released to that office. As he came in, the same man that was waiting for God to leave his glory, to leave his majesty, to come into an office in the state, the same by the instruction of another man was the person that wrote his name before their very eyes included his name in this name. Hallelujah! Yeah. That's why I said you may not know her, you may not know when, but you will do it for you. You know what to see, look for wind or rain. What you are looking for is a word. Just a word from the Lord. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, all you need is a word from Jesus. All you need is a word from the Lord. All you need is a word from Jesus. All you need is a word from the Lord. After all, the people that you are fishing, was it not just putting your nets? Your nets, even. Putting your nets in Luke chapter 5. Putting your nets. And the uh, because they tried through the night now, they couldn't find fish. And they were happy, uh, uh, you know, not happy. But they didn't want to, uh, there's nothing to do, so they were washing their nets, at least so that they can go back and sleep. 
and uh, they were told to put in the net, and they put in the one net. And <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to say that God is only one net, because God will always be a way to do it. But that one net was not easy to carry out. Because the drought of fishes that entered the north was spent for so much. And the Bible recorded. That's not the fact that the fishes were so many, the nets did not break. And they were able to pull it out. And what did they receive? It was the word. The word for the fish. When they received the word, the fish manifested. Yesterday we talked about the word. When I received the word, baby manifested. But the next time, the Bible the next is that Elkanah knew his wife. Elkanah has been knowing his wife since. But when the word was released, Elkanah knew his wife. He became another lawyer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because the word has been released. That's why we don't need to look at how it's going to happen. Look chapter one. The angel Gabriel came to went to uh, Mary and said, you know you're going to have a baby you are now that are highly favored. The Lord is with you, this and that. Special song. Mary said, how can it be seeing that I know no man? And the angel said, I am angel Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. That is how it can be one. Number two is that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. What, who is the Holy Ghost in the first place? For me. Where is it so that you can touch him? Where is the power so that you can touch, touch the power? But he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. But thank God that Mary, the Bible said, the Mary sat up one day in his heart. In her heart. He didn't do it, throw it away. But he kept on pondering in her heart. Hmm, this Holy Ghost. But thank God that Gabriel gave her a testimony and said, I've not finished what I'm saying. Just to tell you, you know your cousin in this way. Nobody's expecting her to have a baby. She's not asking for a baby anymore. Zachariah, the son of is not asking for a baby anymore. Because the Bible says that we're already spoiled, that we're stricken in age and past menopause. But just to tell you, to support what I'm telling you, that you may not need to think about anything. She is now pregnant for six months. So if God has done it before, he will do it again. If he has done it before, he will do it again. Hallelujah. Because I've been doing it. And before you know it, Mary, without the necessary conditions for conception. Because that's why he was saying, how can it be? There are very a necessary condition for conception, but yeah, it didn't happen. So how can it be that I have a, a baby when I don't have no, I have no husband? Actually, they, they just withdraw it. And he said, it's the Holy Ghost that you do it. I just want to tell you that the same Holy Ghost is still here. Amen. So whatever it is, I don't know whether you wrote anything, but whatever you wrote, you're expecting, he will do more than you have asked him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Obstacles are, are lifted and removed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we talked about yesterday anyway, we also talked about uh, these limitations. And one of the things that we said was that uh, God has made provisions for us. But the point is that the provisions may be, will be there, but somehow they may not be manifested. They may not be manifested. I met somebody that uh, somewhere, I won't say this somewhere, because this is in the end. I met somebody somewhere where I went just as I came here. And by the time I got to the hotel room, the people that said, I see, I hope you don't mind. This one is not even a, a member, but she's a sister to a member. She has a problem. She has a problem with her husband, and they have, they've been married for 16 years or something like that, and they have no child. But the point is that there was also a problem with the woman, because the woman kept on woman, uh, is it womanizing? Womanizing. <laughs> <laughs> the woman kept on womanizing. And as if she met them, the husband caught her with the dead man. <laughs> but for each catcher, the husband will. I mean, forgive. 
So where she came home to the east was that uh, the husband now said, please, I want you to go back so that my own people and your own people will help me to speak to you to know whether this man I say will stop. <laughs> but the point is that they have no child. By the time they told me this, I asked the woman sitting there in the room, is it true? Say yes, without even thinking yes. So why do you do it? I don't know. Simple answer, without thinking about it. This thing will have one kind. And eventually, <laughs> when we started praying, I talked to her, we started praying, that something must be behind it. And actually something was behind it. And that was why they even didn't have a child. So when we started praying, somebody began to speak through her. I was saying that uh, they, they were saying that uh, the, the members of the family, husband's family, that the first sons are not supposed to have any child at all. And they walk through the women, their wives. And it's happened that this woman, the husband is the first in their own family, mother's place. So she, they are not supposed to have any child. So, and the other anointing, the, the demon that was ancestral power that was saying it, was saying, and we do that on the day, I did, we did that on the night of uh, traditional marriage. After the traditional marriage, that same night we did it. So that they, she, she would never have a child, and all these things that happened, marriage was given and the rest of them. Well, we have to deal with that. And uh, by the time she came forth, you know, came back, because she didn't know what she said. And we said all this to her. She said that the only thing she knows is that uh, on that night of uh, traditional marriage, that she had a dream, and a man and a woman carried one calabash with some concussion, and told her, come on, lay down, lay down. And she knelt down with that dream, and they made some incantation, this and that, said certain things, did certain things, and then she woke up. 16 years before, so she was a young person. And so when she woke up, she said, thank God, hey, so this thing is a dream. Hey, thank God, but she didn't know that something happened. That was when they did it. So it continued that there was no child. And then I now said, they said your husband's people, no, no first son will have a child. She ran her, her, her eyes through and con confirmed that there was no one, that no first son in that in that place, that had a, a, a child. That the only one that went and adopted a child, adopted and died. So the child went. So, when thank God for Jesus, that's why I said you may not know her. At the end of it all, by the following year, she now said, called me and said she was pregnant. And as I'm talking to you, the babies are, because, are, are up to three years now. And twins, two boys. She said to But if you look at it, there was an embargo on the family. As far as children are concerned, there was an embargo. But when Jesus comes, he breaks every yoke and he breaks every embargo. The mother came up to him, and that was the end of the story. Today, she is a proud mother of two sons that came as twins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Because if you look at it, that it was, the thing was that there are things that come from different places. And another husband was following me in 2018. Please, my business, my business. Somehow, we couldn't meet. We saw that we couldn't really pray. And eventually, 2019, yes, she sent me, he sent me a text and said, uh, Madam, uh, give me a date anywhere in this country. I'm ready to travel to see you. And I said, that is the case, come to my house. So after the convention of 2019, he came and accidentally came with the wife. And the wife is one of us. And by the time we are talking, I found out that they had no children. And by the time and we are talking and talking, I said, at the point I told the man, I said, but you are coming for your business anyway. But I told the man, do you know you can have your own child from your body? 
Not just that, because we already adopted two children that were JS3 as of 2019. So you know how many years the children have stayed with them, boy and girl. But I told him, you can have your own child of your body. I told him, my big problem is that you have a married wife, and your wife has a married husband. She inspired somehow, and we adjusted that himself on the, on the seat. I said, if we deal with these two now, you will have your child. And of course, in the process, we started praying. And the marine husband started with the wife. And was talking and talking and talking. After talking, dealing with her, I said, what about who is dealing with this man? I said, please don't call me. Don't call me. He has his own marine wife. Call the marine wife, let her talk. <laughs> So I have to summon the marine wife. And the marine wife started talking and said, Come on now. What I know is that if his name is Jewel, his name is not Jewel. But if his name is Jewel, he now says, Because I don't want to say the name. What I know is that Jewel is my husband. What I know is that Jewel is my husband. You want to like it or not? Jewel is my husband. I said, And so how did he become your husband? Because human being has really don't mind. He said, When they were young, that their father took them to the water, all the siblings. And by the who knows what they what they went there to do. They did one with each other. And when they came, I looked at all the children, I saw that this one has a proper destiny. So I decided to marry him. So that's why he how he became my husband. I said, eh, but you know, I when we started talking about it, I said we must release this and that and that. We must release our children, our children, you know. I said, no, I cannot. I will not release his children. Uh, because if this is that he's doing, does he even worship the God that you worship? Don't mind that he's not even, ta -ta 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 -ta. He's not even worshiping the same God. I said, that one does not concern you. Simply because we few minutes ago in this my still. Before we got to this point, I told him to surrender his life. And he made confessions, surrendering his life unto God. And I told her, based on this condition, confession, you have to give me everything that belongs to him. And it doesn't concern me. After that, I will know. Say, well, based on the confession, I will give you. But I'll be watching him. Ah. If he draws back, I'll come back again. I said, I'm saying, then, let's finish with this one. Based on the one that has been saved. Because when you are told to pray certain prayer, which you are going to be told, told to pray today, don't take it light. All those things are recorded. Recorded spiritually, not just a record of whatever, spiritually. Yeah, yeah. All those things are effective. When you tell the devil the property based on the scripture, there are no choice but to let go. So based on that thing, you say, I'll give you, I'll give you her children. Give you her, this, I mean, his what, what, all that. But I'll be watching. I said to them. By the time we finished praying, I put my two years. I told the man, I was holding my two years. I said, you know, I'm a teacher. And when we talk, we also illustrate and demonstrate. So if you forget the one that I taught, you will remember that I was feeling my two years. I was saying, continue in him. Don't draw back. If you draw back, you see, if you had it, they will deal with you. You see, you now. You are the head of the family, you are the man. But your wife is, is tired and is spiritual. So for now, what you are is as a mother. Uh, you know, until you grow. But at the moment, follow your wife. If he says, let us pray, pray. If he says, let us worship, worship. Until you come to a point where you now assume your full responsibility as a spiritual head as well in the family. And she agreed. He agreed. That was in April, nearly after the convention. By June, I was in this Lagos. And the, the wife called me and said, I said, I just want to call you to tell you that I'm pregnant too. Yeah. After more than 28 years of marriage, yeah. we want to come and say, I said, you can't see me because you are going early in the morning. But by 2020, this baby son was born. And this baby son still remains. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That was how the embargo was broken. Who was, I mean, causing the embargo? Marine spirit. 
Marine Spirit, did you jump in? You were in your house and they did bam 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 and came to you with sacrifice. Because you don't go to them without sacrifice. So, and the sacrifice are, are tokens. Tokens that have voices that speak. That is why when it goes to certain places, they say, don't worry, I don't take any money. If you just bring 20 naira, 20 naira, I will take it. You know, when the thing manifests, come and thank me properly. And people will be rejoicing. Rejoicing. Because they said, um, it's, it's, not, it's not expensive. When the thing happens, I will go. But you don't know that the 20 naira has become a token, a connecting factor, a reminder that you came there. That even if you are flying in the sky, the 20 naira is still saying something. Yeah. You come to God and begin to say, the 20 naira will say, excuse me, he visited this water spirit. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. So these things, but when we go to such places, we have to be careful. We have to be careful to make sure, because all these things, they are counting. Because we are the people that usually open. When you open the door for the devil, you begin to cry again. We went to a place where the only child was mad. After, uh, yeah, listen, what is it called? Uh, new service. Uh, no, very preparing for new service. Uh, and um, the person was mad. And when we came, it was. Um, we prayed and we found out that there was an embargo from the marriage from the ancestral. They said that their great grandfather came and scattered all the other nonsense. Don't go to scatter anyhow. That is why there's a systematic way. You go to kill a tree, you cut down a tree. That is a, a, a distance. Number one, you should know yourself so that there's no gap. Number two is that there are specific words that you will speak to the tree. And the specific words are the words are not the words you, you can't. They are from the scripture. That there, for example, any tree that the Lord has not planted shall be rooted out. You tree, the Lord has not planted you. So you shall be rooted out. Number two is that uh, two shall not go together except they agree. Today I present an evidence of this agreement. We don't want you again. We don't want you again. We don't want the powers of breaking the again. Therefore, they are going to be caught. It is always systematic. That is why some people say we pray that the rest of them, at the end of it, are more trouble with them. Because they are not praying how they are supposed to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. We went to another family somewhere in the north. And this late man was a graduate for 12 years, no work. Seriously born again. And people didn't even uh, 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 know his name anymore. What he answers all over is, uh, is it pastor? Pastor. Because they were there too. Pastor. So you know because everybody knows him as a preaching person. Preacher all over. So nobody calls him by his name. People don't know his name. But eventually by the time we preached, we found that it was the ancestral altar that was put in an embargo. My father worshipped him. Uh, your, your, your great grandfather worshipped me. Your, your grandfather worshipped me. Your father, your, it is your turn to worship me. And because you are not doing that, you are not moving anywhere. Embargo. Limitation. So he was always preaching and bashing the Bible and scriptures and praying for people, but he was stagnated. Because of what uh, the forefathers did. But what I'm telling the story is that when we began to tell them, you begin to pray, A, 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 for example, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. She, he started praying A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. Because he already knows how to pray. So he knew what you are supposed to pray. And at the point in time, one of the people that went with me went to, told me, yeah, but that, but he's not praying what you are doing. I'm going to tell him to stop my door. And I said, okay, he went and talked him. Brother, brother, begin to pray only A. When we go to CD, you go. Begin to do A, B, A, B, A, B. And that's exactly what we did. And at the end of it all, so the kind of cry that the senior brother cried. Cried. 
And I went back, I was so busy about my car. And I was saying, God, please do something. Do something because he, he's crying like a baby. Crying like a baby. But anyway, it wasn't too long. The manifestation came. And uh, he got a job in an oil company. Oh. And I heard that the job, somebody was moved to put him there. But he was in there uh, on each other. So he was only in the water court. But he got a job in an oil company. Before I knew it, I saw his uh, wedding card. And I don't know how many children he has now. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the embargo was broken. But who was putting up the embargo? The ancestral altars. Who were making a demand on them. Even, and so they were lawful captives. They were lawful captives. And the Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And some people are praying. Praying that you are not, it's not, there's no legal reason. There's no, no, the, 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 whoever they told the person has no right. Like these people that are being kidnapped, and they are praying. Because people are kidnapping them, they have no right, nothing, they have not done nothing. So they, will, they are prey in the hands of the kidnappers. But there are people that are lawful captives that went to the house of the enemy and now they say, You who will be my friend? You will be my friend. You will be my friend. You will be my friend. They may not be thinking you will be my friend, though. But by the time they knock on the negative door and they say, Ah, uh, bring this, bring that, your bag, bring this and that. Before you know it, the person has gotten contact with the negative spirit. And so when the person goes out now, the negative spirit will still be following. In fact, that place we went to at um, Ufuma, it was the ancestral spirit. And in the process, we saw that one lady was following the man about. And we, in the course of the prayer, it was one woman that she met, he met when he used to drive, drive the cell on serious bus. You know, this is the the thing and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So he, that was why he met him. The woman was angry. Eh, we met and we agreed and we do this and we did, he didn't fulfill everything, this and that. So I'll be following him about. And so if you, following him about means he to me. When I, we, I was, the man was listening when it was coming. Out. I said, what about this thing? He couldn't talk. I said, we forget about that now. But the point is that you called this person to you. It was also a problem. Anyway, to the glory of God, by the time we finished that prayer, the matter changed. The insanity disappeared. But the following day, they had to call me and said, uh, you know, just to tell you that that, lady, that my niece was surprised seeing me. Two days after the man called me, Madam, just to tell you that myself and my, we, uh, we my wife and I, and our daughter, that we are now talking. He said it's illegal. Muna, I am why my currency, because the sense has come back. Hey. Only child. But where did it come from? From a negative foundation that has put an effort on them. That because you have done this to me, nobody will move the other way. I met a lady somewhere. <laughs> I met a lady somewhere. And then we found out when we started praying. Suddenly the, the lady was manifesting so much that even four huge women, it's not just tiny, tiny, just three slim girls, ladies. They, they knew the the balanced one. It was not easy for the balanced ladies, some of them, <laughs> to hold this girl. Hey, you don't care. So when they called my bench and I came, I came here. I was already able to put her down. And then what we saw in the day, that she started crying like a, a child. They buried their life. Oh, they buried their life. They did not even allow me to marry. Now, is it fair? Mukona, she's asking me, is it fair? Is it fair? Is it fair? They buried me alive. And because of that, my mother said that nobody would ever marry again in that family. And that's why they had people, elderly ladies, that are not married. So I started giving.
giving reasons to the, uh, the girl that was crying. You see tears. You know that it was not the lady that you are praying for that was crying. And I started giving and said, the thing is that um, somehow they did it. But the point is that by the word of God, that uh, the fathers will not do something because it was the great, great grandfather who was a native doctor that buried him alive, buried her alive to get more power. You know, but um, I said, but you know, the Bible says that this uh, grand, grand, great grandfather will not do something. When he does something, the children should not suffer for this. That's what the Bible says. She shall no longer be said in Israel that the fathers are eating sour cream and the children's tea is at age. So that is the thing. So basically, many I was saying, they said, anyway, they did not even commit that sin. It was their grand grandfather that did this. It was their grandfather, grandfather that did this. Mommy, forgive them. I didn't see her, mommy. Mommy, forgive them. Please forgive them. Forgive them. I forgive you. I forgive you. That was it. Anyway, what the, what that, the, the mother of that lady doesn't belong with us. And I know that they have been wedding in the family. I don't know who, who they are. But the one of the children have gotten married. Because the siege has been broken. But before now, there was an embargo. There was an embargo. Is that kind of embargo we are talking about? When Jabez prayed the prayer, he prayed, oh, that thou may bless me in tears. So that if I'm moving and they say I'm blessed, let me be blessed in tears. And then increase, enlarge my water, enlarge my coast. And the Bible recorded that Jabez prayed that prayer, and God heard and answered. Hallelujah. Amen. That same God is our God. Amen. That no matter what happens, Okay, Jehovah has called upon the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you bless me and enlarge my brother, and that your hand might be with me. That one, your hand might be with me, is very important. And that you will keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And the Bible recorded, and God granted what he asked. That same God is our God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what do we do? Because I've been talking much. Hmm. What do we do to deal with these uh, limitations? One of them we have talked so much yesterday. You must leave. If you lead a holy life, show the wrong and do the right. I know my God will make a way for you. Condition if you lead a holy life. What we discussed yesterday in First Corinthians chapter 10. There it was God that was leading them, telling them to go back on the way. They were they, they were patrolled in the wilderness. Situations and circumstances around them made them. I've met people, but thank God they were now confessing and repenting. But there are people, because they didn't have a child, women, I'm talking about women, they didn't have any child, they were getting children from other men without their husband knowing. I've met them, they confessed to me. Why did they do that? Because of wilderness situation. But we know from when we are read in that first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, that God, no matter the level of wilderness situation, the, the, the principle is holiness before emergency. Because it was not, the Bible says they went through great and terrible wilderness. They went through great and terrible wilderness. So it was not an easy road. But God still wanted them to maintain. One of our problems is that when we get intimidated with situation around us, but when you, are, you remove your eyes, the Bible I mean, this one song says, let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Forget about the situations and circumstances around him. That's also that the song sang in Miracular. It says, Ahurumoni je konaka nusoya, ona ije ya no dilanya. After looking at her, and I asked her, well, she said, help me, allow me to sing this song. Uh, okay, the choir, you're not hearing me. <laughs> so 
the person was moving, moving, and somebody was watching the person moving on a journey to eternity. And was that seen that the person had gone a long way, gone a long way, that's even up to a point that he's even moving with difficulty. But the person was still looking at the person moving. And so that he was still moving without complaining, without murmuring. Was it Amuni Jack or Naga Nozoya? Or Naga Nigeria, and he was into Kwasiobi, Nigeria. Excuse me, or give him by the woman. What is your motivating factor? Or why sin na Onila and Gosi? And then the person that was person, question, continued and said, Because I can see before him. Na iru yaka e dosi ri dosi bon otu tu so bu na e chiche and this is I'm seeing that he still has a long way to go and I said what was on and asked we try ya excuse me ogene bari ri mogi o we si na oni la nya ti ngosi because it's not that I've been told tro- it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven and many other thoughts on the way. But Jesus guides and keeps us. And that nothing shall harm us. His presence gives us joy every day. So that you have a problem, you have a challenging situation. It's when you now go and say, I'm a rapper and a rookie. Or get your. I'm a ceremony rookie. That is why you go back to him. Because he has answer to everything. It's not a time for you to deviate. If you are taking a decision to serve him, if you are taking a decision to follow him, he will work with you as long as you are, you are living right. As long as you are living right, his presence will go with you. But when it's a life of sin, you are on your own. You can begin to pray, sing, pray, I mean, pray in tongues. Bang, lose this and that. The prayer is not going anywhere. One speaker that came to a convention years ago said that it's when Mother Hen will carry the small, small cheese. He will be covering them. Maybe he sees a kite in the air. You know, kites will die and carry. The Mother Hen will carry them, will cover them. Under his her wings. But he says, when any small chick decides, ah, I can stay on my own, can do it. And he wanders out of the covering of the mother, the kite will die and carry it. And when the kite dies and carries that small chick, as the kite is going up, the small chick will quick, 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 quick. But the more he says, quick, 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 the more higher the, the kite goes. And before you know it, that is the end of this. And he said, that's the kind of prayer to Christians pray. You are brought out of the kind of your God. And the devil can. You are seeing prayer tongues. He says, it's the kind of tongue that that small chick is speaking. But the problem was still increasing. That's the kind of tongue we pray. We speak. So, whatever be the case, if we are going to get to our destination, it was God that told the Israelites to back and go. And make them to come and say, Papa, Papa, because God, when well, Moses carry your people, because this thing is too much. But he did not leave them, he followed them. And he was even moving ahead of them in a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire. He was walking with them. And the Bible, no one, the Bible says, that, so all of them. Drank the same spiritual name and took the same spiritual bread. But with many of them, God was up this because they were overthrown in the wilderness. Little problem. Hey, what of this cucumber garlic that you have been eating? This cucumber. We now know what cucumber is. You know what garlic is and you know how sweet it is. They are. But it became a problem, a snare for the Israelites. It became a snare for them. And because of that, they started murmuring. They went into idolatry, and God was not pleased with them. And because they, they did that, the Bible says, God, many of them were for, for overthrown. I mean, they, they, were, they died in the wilderness. They surely had stopped. As many as said this, they will not get there. And they planted money. The journey was extended. The number of years extended would have been faster. 
But because of all these things, they were slowed down. Because God has taken a decision that nobody that I mean goes into that kind of situation will get to that end. We will get to the expected end. And that's how it happened. So there were definite problems. I don't know your own definite problem. I don't know what your husband is doing to you. I don't know what your mother in law is doing to you. Whatever be the case, Mommy Jess has given us way out. I do not want me has given us way out, no matter the situation or circumstance. He has given us a way out through the scripture. If we follow her teachings, precept by precept, we can miss it. We can, our life will be easier for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Life will be easier for you. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. But the point is that from the start of the journey, you take a decision. No matter, I've made up my mind. To walk God's way the rest of my life, I made up my mind. To walk God's way the rest of my life. You continue the journey no matter what. There are distractions. There are things that can pull you out. But when you stand still, you can begin to live on the miraculous. Amen. That woman that they called Sarepha woman started living on the miraculous until the famine ended. God began to make miraculous supply. In some situations, miraculous supplies are still available in our own time. Amen. They are still available. Amen. The only thing is that you move on the righteous side of God so that it will help you. Because one thing is that when you move on the righteous God side, the presence of God will be with you. And so when one for said that when these Israelites were moving, the mountain saw them and skipped like rams. Did you catch it? The mountain saw them and skipped like rams. Jordan saw them and fled. Verse 4 to 5. Okay, let me continue. So one one four says that when they were moving, when Israel let, came out of Egypt and all that, they were moving. God was moving with them. And uh, it's not that there were no mountains. There were mount definite obstructions, definite hindrances. But the Bible says that these mountains, when they saw them, they skipped. When Jordan saw them, they fled. When the little he saw them, they skipped like lambs. Why? Because of the God, presence of the God of Israel that was moving with them. And verse um, 4 to 5. Did you do 5? 4? 4? The mountains give like lambs. The hills like lambs. Hallelujah. Jordan also fled. Praise the Lord. Why did they fled? What am I trying to say? There are definite obstructions. Ha! Huh? If all we are easy, if all we are soft, where will that cross be? Where is the crown? But in such moments, God gives you to you chances of proving what He can do. You can live on the miraculous. Hallelujah. Amen. And you continue to help you in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> There's nothing that this God cannot do. That's what they say protocol breaker. God put on my, my headlamp years ago. Just came back from school then. And I wanted to usually pray. And then I said, I needed to go for this way keeping at Ogosi. And my car would move at night. And my driver went, doesn't stay for the night. So that particular car, was, I, I haven't driven it, I've not, I've not been driving. But when I now entered, I, well, before then, I, I noticed that the, the headlamp was not wonderful. I said, do I pray or do I go? Say, let me first of all face God. How well, there was no topic. How excellent is your name? You are the Alpha and Omega. You are wonderful in my life. I worship you, Jesus. Oh Lord. Those that. By the time I came back, I came down to another the car to move. I put on the hand on the side. I said, God, excuse me. You know now, I will, I've been telling people that you, you can do all things. I've been telling them people that you can be a mechanic. So no problem. I touched the person, I said, because I was sitting there, I said, you know you are sitting with me. 
You are going to do the mechanic for me, please. Lord. But I entered the I passed through my is it uh, electricians. I said, excuse me, my father, we are passing now. We are passing the electrician. I'm not going to stop you. Because I told them and you told us that you can do all things. So I'm not stopping. So I moved. When I got to Obosi, my aunt wanted me to take them around nine. So I was still at the way keeping where the thing when you know before back. Before just before nine. The table came from this and said, Remember that you have no light. So come on, shift or say something. Jesus, oh what you make me Jesus, oh what you make me better in my life. I pushed him away. I said this song was going, I was singing. But the time I did that, I forget. I forgot. In one it was time to move, I entered the vehicle with all of my arms. I am involuntary action. I, I mean, I even forgot that I was no right. Immediately I pressed on the headlamp, and it was a full beam. Wow! And I started shouting. Hallelujah! Amen. Because he can do all things. Amen. There's no reason to doubt. God can do it again. There's nothing he cannot do. Protocol breaker. Is it food that you're allergic? That was a time I couldn't even find food. But I was a graduate working for the government. My husband graduates working for the government. I don't even know what happened. Or well, maybe the salaries were not enough, and probably. But the point is that there was no food. And I said, God, you know, I'm not going to speak to my husband about this food. Because if he has one eye, I know. If he has two. If he has zero, I know. So I know that he doesn't have. So there's no need to bother him. You know, I've been telling people that you are uh, a uh, child that you provide. So I'm not going to tell them. My father, I'm writing my list of all cross soup and then uh, everything that I need. So it's all cross soup and gary and uh, firewood even. But at that point, before then, I had never cooked with firewood. But at that point, I just found that I don't. And uh, it was me, water, because we traveled to. Name. So after praying that prayer anyway, I slept. I continued sleeping. My mother never knew that there would there would be a problem of food even in the house. So the following morning, some people early, some young daughters, they came. This, this and that and that to deliver this and that I prayed. After prayer, they gave me one bottle of chinchin. That chinchin was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> And in at that situation, I didn't need anything that you use. I use my energy to break again. I use the saliva to begin to stop struggling again. So I just kept it at the side to prevent that. But just by afternoon, the miracle happened. Somebody traveled all the way from where? Where were they? Because Benin, Benin, I came. Ah, you know, when your father died, you didn't see him. Take this. When you are this, take this. You know, that other thing. You know, my that my list was, was 1,500. That's the total in that list, 1,500. But by the time he finished all he came to do, without entering their house, the, before then, they never came to me when we were close. They never came to me when we were cross, I mean, passing the house to sit up and say hi. And after that, they never came down to me when we passing their house to meet us first. They will always stop and drop their property, drop their uh, parrots, drop their dogs and the rest of them, and they can come and say it's yours. But that particular since the day, they carry even the parrots, the dogs, everything in the house, in their car, and came and said all these things and released. My bill was one fact. They released 6,000 something. I started the question. My husband did not know. There's only the trouble in him now. Why you know even if you tell him there will no money? So why is you Let me face the person that will give me money. I'm talking about the problems and situations that God can see do something. All you need to be, trust him. Trust him and remain in him. And doors will be open. And miracles will be happening. Amen. Here and there. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have too many testimonies in that direction. But one, another thing you will do is to reject negative and satanic covenants. Reject them. Reject 
I think I'm, in the course of saying all the things I've, I've said, I've thought so much on that. Because when you visit certain places, you don't know you have sold your destiny. And they will not tell you what you sold. They will not give you the real picture of what happened. You just went. And it was then. But certain times when I speak with people, and uh, you know, one man said, uh, I gave me a clear picture of himself. And the wife at the point went around the, the thing and said, Excuse me, mommy, let me say something. Excuse me, daddy, that uh, 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 ram, ram meat, Egunu, that you brought, that I said I will not cook with my pot, that my children will not join me to eat. Where did you get it? The man will be angry. Madam, don't, don't mind her. Gossiping and gossiping. Did anybody ask you of this thing? I'm talking about gossiping and gossiping. I will smile, smile. And I said, don't worry, don't worry, but that's what I needed. After a point in time, he was still giving me black uh, cream beer. The whole wife said, Excuse me, let me ask Daddy one question. Daddy, that day that you came back and told me they gave you a stone to swallow. Are you going to swallow a stone? What happened that day? The man became angry again. How can you be talking? Did anybody ask you? In our safe and natural, did anybody ask you about these things that you're saying? Madam, don't mind her. It's, this, this is, this is, that happened long ago. I said, is that thing that happened long ago that I'm looking for? Because some of these things happened before your mother was married. Some of these things happened before your, your father was born. Some happened before your, your grandfather was born. But these things, when it happens, we think it is clean. It is not clean. You must visit it. And today we are visiting them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are visiting them because when you sweep and sweep certain things under this table, it is still in this hall. It has not moved. It is still there. But if you want to clean, you remove everything and sweep off and go on. That's what God will help us to do today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But when we go to such places, we're consulting certain things that we don't know that we are getting into bondage. Genesis chapter 42. Jacob called his uh, children and said, Why are you looking at me? Don't you know that there is Genesis 42? Don't you know that there is uh, corn in Egypt? Don't you know? Can't you see that people go to Egypt to buy corn? I don't know what people go to to solve one problem, to get job, to get their healing, to get what? That is not of God. And people will say, everybody goes there now. And the white church of land that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you look one at one another? Eh? You have gone. Two. He said, behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt now. Go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die. That's the way. I went to that place. Even though they told me to bring candle. I went to that place. I, I didn't see any idol. But the point is that they told me to get this thing. Get the other one. And that's not, no, I can't see any altar. You may not see altar as physical. Many of the places are not of God. And by their fruits, you shall know them. There are too many places that are not of God. Ministry, 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 ministry. You know, 100 days fasting. It's not a very beautiful 100 days fasting. But it's not about us. You don't intimidate anybody with 100 days fasting. And everybody will pray, pray, pray. If you see what you are praying, this and that, he told us to do. Go and open the, 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 the background. You find out that there's a negative order there, that the foundation is not right. After doing something, in fact, some of these people that do this, they go to some places and get charm. In fact, that's one story that we heard of our ISIS in one place. And the lady came and told her, please, my brother, I didn't think she was a first time, a, a visitor. That somebody, uh, that, that the, the husband, that's a ministry. And then because he needs to be seen, 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 seeing all these things, calling phone number and the rest of them. Which is what is bringing people all over the place. She, they took him to a place where you could see. And that since they took him to that place, that his eyes had remained wide open, no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long, but for many days. I wanted to see now. So 
Because the eyelids will not close. I don't know what they did. So it became a problem. Who will solve the problem? Is what he wanted to see. Thank God for the God of SFI. Thank God for the power of God in SFI. It was sacrifice. That the she to the eyes he told her, do a drop a seed, drop a sacrificial seed, and she dropped a room. And that was the end of the matter. From that night, the eyes started closing. No more open. But if you didn't do it, the eyes did not remain open. She began to see, eh? She began to see and see. You begin to see, 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 see. And it's continuing to see. People will be rushing. Hey, it's this one. Well. It's this one. Well. I'm not seeing what is the solution. What is the solution? I have prophesy. Do I prophesy? Prophesy. Prophesy. All right. All right. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, that you do this. That was how I was watching on the TV. I was over there. Uh -huh. I think I told her that uh, uh, you confirmed that uh, he came from uh, maybe Abuja or something. Hey, uh, even the other time you went to visit your friend, you will leave the person there and move about. Do I prophesy? Prophesy. Because another person. The other person is saying something. No, nothing else. No solution. Nothing else. I will rocket you myself. I will rocket you myself. Hallelujah. Amen. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. But 
part of the problem is also negative foundation on which rock? What on says on Jesus Christ, that rock I stand. Where on which, on what power are you standing? Many families in Africa are standing on the wrong foundation, including my own. But there must be a time when you have realized and say, no more, no more, no more. All you power that my forefathers consulted, on which we are building, no wonder when we build it, we fall. This and that, because, and part of the reason is that when they do this, is they die. And they're waiting for another person to come and ca carry the priesthood. And nobody is carrying the priesthood. So they begin to deal with every member of the family. And they tell me, uh, you know, ask him, ask him. I was in a town, and the, the great grandfather came and called me and said that they are killing their people and that I should come and protect. And I came, and when I came, I started doing my work. Ask him, ask this person you're praying for. Did I, did, since I came, was anybody dying? But since their grandfather died, nobody's giving me food again. Even their father did not give me food, so I killed him. This one is the, the first song. Yeah, you should give me food. And leave him, give him to me. I said, he won't, he won't give you food again. Because that can't you see that has changed, power has changed that. That the matter has changed. You can't continue. Eventually, anyway, of course, a lot of things you have gone in a long way. And they have said, because of that, this one will not happen. This one will not happen. This one will not happen. All the things that he said will not happen have started happening. Because he has broken every fetters. He has broken every fetters. He has broken every fetters. He has set me free. And I sing hallelujah. And I sing hallelujah. And I sing hallelujah. He has set
they follow you. If you allow him to, to lead you, the storm will cease. The storm, the wind will cease. And they will respect themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then repent of anything. And then if there be all those cases of local captivity, you will reject and renounce them. But if you don't do that, the prayer will not work. Because the Bible says, two cannot work to accept that agreement. I've seen situations, ah, this person you are praying, praying for. But I did this even tell you that he doesn't want me. He wants me now. And I'll quickly answer because I don't make a mistake. But a few minutes ago, I told him to reject you. And he reject, she rejected you. Did you not hear it? He said, yes, I did. Then based on that, can't you see you cannot operate? And then the prayer will continue. So you must be sure that as you begin to pray this prayer now, you will be serious over it. To tell them that I, I see I don't want you again. And consciously ask Jesus to take over your affairs. And don't be complacent. Cry unto God like Jabez. Cry and give reasons. I want to say a little thing because I'm around, I'm closing actually. Say a little thing about that. Because when you pray, it's not just to say, please now, please now. God, please now, please do it for me. You know that these people are doing that. that. One of the things that you need to ask is to give reasons. Why it has to be so. Bible says, remind me of my promises and argue your case. So you must tell him why. And because you know, I don't have a chance. You know, I don't do this. But Father, because the, the point is that you say that none shall be barren in the midst of your people. You say, ask, we shall receive and seek. You can want, and then your word say, makes it clear that you watch over your word to perform it. That thou see this one that I proclaim that they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And I'm in Christ Jesus. And based on that, my Father, thank you because you will do it for me. My seek up, you begin to pray. And also increase your intensity of prayer. Increase the Bible said, ah, seek not. There are various levels. There are various levels. You are, you are knocking. Ah, you are asking. Please now, please now. You are seeking. You are putting action. Motion has entered. You know. You are knocking. You have intensified the action. Bah, bah, bah. So continue to step up and step up and step up. That's the prayer that says, importunate, importunate prayer. Pray until something happens. Importunate prayer. We have to learn to live because there's no other place you can have solution except in God. No matter who, who uh, threatens you wherever. In fact, certain times, I mean, at that, when such as I come, the first thing that comes from my mind, even don't is laughter. <laughs> even if you are telling me and they say, it's laughter, I don't know. <laughs> it just comes on like that. Because the laughter, I say, ha ha ha. Who can speak and it comes to pass when the Lord has come to manage it? The Lord has said, Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. So that who is that person that will speak and it comes to pass? Hallelujah. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So increase your intensity and uh, as you pray. And then you stand up and resist the devil. Resist and pray and push on. Push on. And I'm not going to talk about first Samuel chapter 13. I will. Okay. I'm not going to talk about it. But the point is that when the trouble came, uh, it was in David. And David cried. After crying, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He called himself, let me show God in my heaven. And the next one, he began, began to ask God, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake him? And God says, but she overtake. And you recover all. And the next thing is that David started uh, pursuing. And as he took a step to pursue, God was directing. When you take a step to pursue in prayer, that if you listen very well, you see that the Holy Ghost will begin to tell you, give you angles to pray. Because the Bible says, we don't know exactly what to pray. That's why the Holy Ghost prays for us. In Christ, that we must understand. God is still able to do it today. Whatever it is, God is more than able. Let us pray.